Chapter 2 Contraband Will, long-range sensors just picked up a Peacekeeper Corvette, Zephyr announces from her station. Turning to glance up, she adds, Looks like it's an interdiction patrol. Oh yeah, Benny says. They patrol the entire sector. Will turns to his Braylack hacker, scowling. That could have been useful information, you know, earlier. Benny looks at Zephyr as Will runs from the bridge. What's up his butt? She shakes her head. One, I think you actually used that one right. Two, beats me. She turns back to her station, then makes to get up. I'll see what's up. Benny hops down from his chair, waving her off. No, no, you keep them busy. I'll see what Captain Weirdo is doing. Will! Benny shouts as he enters the crew lounge. It's empty. Where are you? Computer, where is the captain? From the overhead speakers, the same voice that greeted Zephyr and Maxim aboard the Ghost, not that long ago, replies. The captain is in his quarters. Benny hurries into the corridor. Banging on the door to Will's quarters, he shouts, Hey, what are you doing? The door slides open and Will waves Benny in. Come help me! Next to the bed are what looks like two dozen fist-sized blue crystals. Benny points. Is that? Trilorium? Yep, lots of it. Will holds up one of the crystals. Benny walks over to the pile. Sweet boneless zip-zap, he whispers, taking in the dozens of crystals. Where? How? Does that matter? Will interrupts. I mean, yeah, it kind of does. Benny looks his friend in the eyes. These are... Blood, he shudders, and worth a fortune. I know what Trilorium is, Will growls. Benny is still looking at him. Then you know they're incredibly illegal, right? In answer, Will only points to a medium-sized cargo container, which is already a quarter full of crystals. Benny kneels, taking the crystal Will is holding out and placing it inside. Each time he turns to take a crystal from Will, the captain makes awkward eye contact. Look, I'm not trying to sell them or anything like that, Will says at last. I've had these for years. Once I knew what they were, I took them from Zarix and just tossed them in this hiding place. He hands Benny another crystal. He'd hired me to transport a bunch of stuff for him, stuff he'd stolen from somebody, some warlord somewhere. I was being nosy during the trip, checking to see what he had in the crates when I came across these. He holds one up looking at it in the light before handing it to Benny. When I saw them, I had to look up what they were. The crystallized blood of the indigenous beings the planet Trill. Blood diamonds, taken to a horrible galactic extreme. Enormous energy transfer capabilities, double that of most superconductor cables. And they can store potential energy better than most batteries. Sounds about right, Benny says. The moment I knew where they came from, I knew Zarix couldn't get his skelly hands on them. Will passes Benny the last crystal. Come on, let's take these to the hold. Benny holds open the door for Will as he awkwardly hauls the cargo box through. Why are they under your bed? I don't know. At the time, I didn't think much about it. It was only me aboard the ship by the time you all joined me. I'd forgotten about them for the most part. He glances back at the Braylack hacker beside him. I'm kind of surprised you didn't find them all the times you've snooped in my room. Benny tuts. Gross, like I'd look under your bed. Will shakes his head and continues through the lounge to the hatch leading down into the cargo bay. When they get to a corner of the hold that looks no different from the other three, Will sets the crate down. Benny watches with interest. Will reaches down and presses against a floor panel. First in one section, then another. A series of clicks come from the deck plating, then a panel pops up. Will slides it away. Benny stares, eyes bugging out a little. What in the whirring is that? A smuggler's hold? Will looks up from the now wide open hole in the deck. What, this? This hole in the floor you didn't know existed? What makes you think it's a smuggler's hold? He tuts, dropping down inside the hole, which is nearly a meter deep and too wide. He gestures for Benny to slide the crate of Trilorium crystals over. We'd be rich if we sold them, you know, Benny mutters. 
Will reaches for the hacker, but misses by an inch as Benny dodges. Instead, he settles for hurling a crystal at the irritating Braylock, who dodges again, just barely. Benny squeaks, tripping over his own feet, landing with a thud. He scrabbles instantly for a blue crystal. Careful, this could explode! Will hops out of the smuggler's hold and grabs the crystal he just lobbed at Benny, tossing it into the hold. They require a tremendous amount of energy to break them. Remember, I looked them up. He slides the floor panel back into place. Unseen latches click, securing it in place. Benny sits up, gesturing to the sealed hold. You know, that could be useful later. No touchy, Will says, pointing to the now impossible to see compartment. Seriously, touch it and I'll float you, without a spacesuit. Benny makes a face. Okay, jeez. The small hacker looks at the floor panel wistfully. How'd the Ankarans not find this when they helped you repair the ghost on Harith Prime? Or your under-the-bed hiding place, for that matter? Will shrugs. Luck, I think, for the most part. With Ankarans, it's hard to tell. They may well have found them and just not cared. True, they're weird. Just a routine stop. As Will and Benny enter the bridge, Maxim looks up from his station. What were you two doing? Benny opens his mouth and is shoved into his own station by Will. Nothing, Will says. Don't worry about it. What are the space cops doing? Maxim looks at Zephyr, who shrugs. He turns back to Will. They're pulling alongside us now, actually. Will grunts, falling into his seat. Great. Zephyr is tapping her console. We should establish a protocol for letting everyone know which transponder we are flying under. I took the call from the peacekeepers, and it caught me by surprise when they called us Event Horizon. She puts air quotes around the name. Will shudders. Still gives me nightmares. I'd forgotten that was the ident I picked for the ghost. The ghost is equipped with a very illegal mod to its transponder allowing the crew to change the name and registration data of the ship on the fly. So how's this whole getting pulled over thing work? Zephyr stares at him a moment. Surely you've been boarded before. Don't call me Shirley. And no, actually, I haven't. Will snorts at the joke only he gets. Zephyr quirks an eyebrow. How is that possible? Peacekeeper patrols are in most major star systems. They're as ubiquitous as, well, she thinks about it. Grum and Drenhol bars. And how many major star systems have we visited since you all came aboard? Will asks, his own eyebrows raising. Zephyr pauses, thinking. Her face scrunches a little. Well, Dren, I hadn't thought about it. We really do lurk in crappy parts of the GC. Will nods. Yeah, I tend to shy away from places where, no offense, your people and their warships congregate. Benny louts out a high-pitched laugh. Your people! Maxim scowls at the Braylock from across the bridge. What do you mean, your people? Will raises both hands, a palm facing Benny and Maxim each. Anyway, back on topic. What's one of these traffic stops like? Watching the exchange, Zephyr answers. They're pretty routine, really. An inspection team will come aboard, usually a mid-level centurion and a squad of enforcers. They'll scan the ship from inside and out, look under things and inside cargo crates. Benny tuts. Don't forget how the mood of the centurion in charge determines how much of the ship they'll toss. Zephyr scowls. That's not... Benny holds a hand up to silence the much taller Pelorian woman. Talk to the hand, sister. Will gasps, then starts laughing. Zephyr turns a deep shade of purple, while Maxim tries his best to stifle a laugh, fails, then lets loose a roaring belly laugh that makes everyone turn to look at him. He looks back at them. What? That was funny. Will catches his breath. No argument here. He looks at Maxim. So, can we bribe him? Why are you asking me? Will shrugs. I don't know. I mean, you're a peacekeeper. Ex-peacekeeper, Zephyr corrects. Fine. Ex-peacekeeper. Didn't you ever do these patrols? Well, yes. 
Maxim says. But never as lead centurion. He looks over to Zephyr, who shakes her head. We were both low-level troops. We didn't get our rank until we moved to the intelligence directorate. After being framed and now cleared of all charges, Maxim still prefers to clarify his employment status with the peacekeepers. It's easy to confuse for most, as Pelorians, by and large, are peacekeepers. In fact, no other race serves in the GC military. Benny chimes in. You know you could use one of your tri- Hey! He ducks as the Kel figurine is hurled across the bridge, nearly hitting him in the face. The what? Maxim asks. Also, that wasn't cheap, Will. If you don't like it, we can return it. Before anyone can say anything else, a chime comes from the overhead speakers, and the ship announces, Peacekeeper vessel is in position for boarding tube connection. Will turns his head to the ceiling. Gabe, meet us at the... He looks at Zephyr. Starboard. The starboard airlock, please. On my way, Captain. Will takes a deep breath, letting it out in a rush. Okay, let's get this dog and pony show started. As Maxim and Zephyr follow him out of the bridge, Maxim asks, What's a pony? Zephyr shrugs. What's a dog? Will looks over his shoulder. And you, put my action figure back where it belongs. Benny makes an obscene gesture as the bridge hatch closes. Anything to declare? With a hiss, the airlock hatch opens, parting down the middle, each half sliding away. On the other side stand seven peacekeepers, tactical armor and all. The one in the front has several markings that stands out from the others. Guess that one is in charge, Will thinks. He bows, spreading his arms out in front of him. Welcome aboard the Event Horizon. Zephyr leans over and whispers, What are you doing? Will straightens, looking at her out the corner of his eye. Nothing. What? Shut up. He turns back to the peacekeeper. So, yeah, hi. The lead peacekeeper inclines his head, or her head, permission to come aboard, asks a modulated voice, designed to make all peacekeepers sound the same. Will nods. Granted. He steps to the side, making room for the peacekeeper procession to enter. The leader turns after the other six have entered, raising her or his face shield. Her, definitely a her, Will decides, watching her walk across the threshold of the airlock. Guys aren't that graceful. I am Centurion Turin. I'll be leading the inspection detail of your ship, Captain. Will nods. Fishburn, Lawrence Fishburn. He gestures to the others. These are some of my crew. He points to Maxim. Leroy Jenkins, then Zephyr. Marsha Brady, then Gabe. C-3PO. Even after the Harith incident, Will still prefers to keep the ghost and crew under the radar as much as possible. There's no specific need for the false identities, but it's fun and habit. The peacekeeper Centurion frowns, taking each member of the crew until she settles on Max and Zephyr. Pelorians. Zephyr answers for both of them. We are, thanks for noticing. She scowls a little for effect. Birth defect, Maxim adds, pointing to Zephyr's midsection. She couldn't serve. Turin nods, then looks up at Maxim. And you? The big Pelorian turns away, affecting embarrassment. Discharged. Wounded in action, combat trauma. Turin turns to Will. Quite the band of misfits you have here. Captain Fishburne, is this it? Will shakes his head once. There's a Braylack on the bridge. The peacekeeper officer shudders. Braylack. She says it like a curse. Very well, we'll get started. She turns to her crew. You three head aft and work forward. Start in the cargo hold. She gestures to the remaining three. You, start at the bridge. Will looks up at Gabe. Can you escort Team 2 to the cargo bay? Of course. The tall droid gestures politely. This way, please. As the peacekeeper boarding party splits up, Will and the crew fall into step with Saturian Turin and her team. She turns to Will. What are you? Molten Eye? 
She looks Will up and down. Human, he offers, opening the bridge hatch. Don't worry, I'm the only one, he smiles. You're not supposed to be able to leave your system, she says, then is distracted by Benny's station. She runs a finger along one of the displays he's attached to the bulkhead, revealing something sticky looking on the finger of her glove. This is disgusting. Before Will can say anything, Benny pops out from under his console. Screw you, this station is perfect. Four pulse rifles snap up and are aiming at him. I mean, he starts. This is Tririan, Will says, stepping between the about-to-be-shot Braylac and the peacekeepers. He's a Drenog. Turin motions for her troops to lower their weapons. She walks to the opposite side of the bridge, looking at Maxim's console. Weapons? Maxim activates his console. The, uh, um, event horizon is, as you can see, an Ankaran raptor. He glances at Will, his expression showing his annoyance at the fake identity. Turin nods. They're fine ships even when not maintained properly. She looks askance at Will. I served on one briefly. Will gives a fixed smile, turning toward the bridge hatch. Shall we continue the tour? He looks at Maxim. Leroy, can you hold down the fort? The burly ex-peacekeeper nods. Of course. Will and Zephyr escort the boarding party out of the bridge, just in time for them to hear Benny say before the hatch closes, Why can't I be in charge? <laughs>